Welcome back to eHistoriata. Our next delegate admits that he started his craft a little late in life, but now he's weaving away using traditional materials with a modern twist. Abade, my name is Mark Redaventi, and I'm a contemporary weaver from the village of Santa Rita, and I'm a delegate to the 2016 Festival of the Pacific Arts. I first learned to weave at the age of 26 uh, from my grandmother, and she taught me the traditional um, guagua, which is the two ring basket that we make out here in Guam. Uh, and that was the only basket that I learned to make from her. Um, I did that for a few years, and uh, I stopped weaving totally for almost seven years, I think. I think maybe seven or eight years. And uh, I didn't pick it up again until I was 38. Thankfully to my wife who uh, purchased a uh, video on how to make a hat and from there on it just took off. And so I've been searching the internet and locally for anything that can inspire me uh, to uh, create art and uh, I guess uh, brought in my uh, weaving skills. Mark says his grandmother was a delegate to the second festival of Pacific Arts and that it's an honor for him to be chosen to be a delegate. He says he hopes he lives up to her expectations of being a weaver. I am the only grandson from my grandmother who uh, continued the art. And so I have very big shoes to fill. Um, I need to pass this on to as many people as I can. I think uh, for my grandmother, it was, uh, it was to pass the time. It was something she knew how to do, and she did it very well. Uh, and she's the master weaver of Finn Dynasty. And um, we, uh, we would watch my aunt drop her off, and she would go into this little jungle area across my house uh, in Dededo and uh, she would just spend the whole day there just processing leaves um, and we would go when we go to parties at her house we just see the rolls of banana leaves and uh, we never had a second thought about it. Because of the rhino beetle infestation weavers like Mark are using pandanus leaves. It involves a long process including drying the leaves, removing the thorns and rolling. The pandanus leaf, uh, I'm fortunate that my friends have trees in the yard and uh, they are, uh, they're very generous with the material. So uh, if I need some, come and get some. Uh, sometimes they already have it processed and they're like, here you go. And uh, that's kind of a gift if somebody rolls a whole roll and they give it to you. Um, that's an honor for them to give it to you because it took them hours and hours to put that thing together. Some of the work you might see from Mark are contemporary by using non-traditional material in his artwork. This is, I guess, I wouldn't say really, really traditional, but this would be the standard pandanus leaf bracelet. And this is how, this is the first way I learned how to make it. However, uh, making it this size, you could only sell it to so many people, or you could give it away to one person and that's it. Um, so what I did was I figured out how to get it so that I could incorporate a clasp, so that way I could make just a few sizes, but it would fit almost everybody. So um, just incorporating it. So this took a little while to figure out um, how much leaf to use, uh, finding the buckles is another thing. Um, and then again, um, trying to get uh, the natural material into more modern material. So uh, figuring out how to get the banana leaf into the paracord without snapping it. Uh, and it's, it's always trial and error. And I've got lots of patience to sit there and kind of figure stuff out. So um, it, was a, it was a fun uh, project to figure out. What's keeping me um, weaving and constantly um, Involving the art is uh, there's just so many things to try. Um, you could make different types of rings, bracelets. Um, you could take a traditional uh, weaving technique, which is like um, this technique here with the banana leaf or this pattern, and I just figured out how to make it into a bow tie or make it into a necktie. And so um, you're only limited to your imagination, and uh, that's what's keeping me going right now. I'm always trying to expand my knowledge of. Uh, of weaving, uh, I'm constantly searching the web and picking people's brains on how to do something. If it's a technique that they know how to do, uh, and if, how can I incorporate it to what I already know how to do? And so it's kind of just putting two and two together. Some of this stuff is, uh, like this is actually a leather lacing pattern that somebody posted on YouTube, and I didn't have any leather, but I've got a lot of pandanus sleeves, so why can't I just use pandanus sleeves and do the same thing? And so it turned out really neat. This will be his first 
Festival of Pacific Arts. I'm excited to see what other weavers are doing. Um, I'm, uh, I'm interested in the traditional art that they're doing, but also I want to see if uh, they're moving into the more contemporary. How are they using it uh, with more modern material? Uh, if they're moving over into more uh, utilitarian, like just bracelets and rings and stuff the younger kids will be interested in. Um, I find it the younger kids are not interested in the traditional, traditional art. Um, nobody's going to carry on a basket or um, they have a hard time like just wearing the hat itself but if you can make them a bracelet out of the traditional material they'll jump on that immediately and, and, and wear that so um, I'm hoping to pick up a few tips from them and hopefully um, the art that I'm doing I give them a few ideas. Although he doesn't have any apprentices currently he invites anyone interested in learning how to weave to attend classes on the last Saturday of every month at 2nd Katurin tomorrow at Oka Point. At the moment, my goal right now is to, to kind of um, uh, entice the younger generation that the material is here, it's on island. Um, we can take it, uh, we can turn it upside down and twist it and we can make it our own and, uh, and just use what we have already rather than um, being consumer, I don't know, uh, just buying all the consumer goods that are out there. You could make your own bracelet and be like the only person who has it. There won't be a hundred of them out there. Um, you can make your own ring and it'll be your, your ring that you made by hand and uh, it'll be um, unique to you. We'll wrap up our show when e Historiata continues after the break.